there's no need to get tense Relax with Flux Condenser. Subscribe, baby, subscribe. To begin the chassis restoration, I mounted it to my radio stand. Yeah, it's a stand made just for working on a radio chassis, proving once again you really can find everything on the internet. I started by gently removing the dial pointer and wrapped it in thin board to protect it. I then removed the dial and bulb assembly so I could access the friction wheel underneath. The original bulb was toast. The dial was dirty and the brass grommet tarnished, so I decided to separate the parts to make cleaning easier. It was a delicate operation and more time-consuming than I had anticipated. After a while, I got the pieces apart and, along with the friction wheel, safely set them aside. I decided it would be best to remove the speaker assembly, so I labeled and snipped the wires, then removed the screws holding the assembly in place. I cut a circular piece of cardboard to protect the speaker cone from even more damage. In an upcoming video, we'll repair all those tears in the cone. The chassis of our tiny radio is jam-packed with parts, many of which would need to be replaced. To help access them, I removed the variable condenser, taking care again to mark the wires. The variable condenser needed to be cleaned and lubed, so having it out of the chassis was going to be helpful. You'll learn all about the variable condenser and the other parts I've mentioned in upcoming segments. Attached to the chassis was this serial number sticker. With all the cleaners I'd be using, I knew it would get destroyed, so I separated it from the chassis and laminated it for protection. After removing the more delicate components, I sprayed the chassis with electronics cleaner and let the mass drain to my bench. The cleaner does a good job removing caked on dirt from the components and wires. I then cleaned the top of the chassis with a mild abrasive and removed a few small rust spots with navel jelly. Old or new, an electronic circuit is represented visually by a schematic. A schematic shows how a circuit is connected electronically, but it isn't a true representation of how parts and wires are physically built. The location of components on a schematic, for example, is usually not the same as how they're actually assembled. And all those lines often don't correlate at all to actual wires. If a schematic was drawn otherwise, it would need to be 3D and unnecessarily complicated. Here's the schematic for our old Emerson. Each part is represented by a symbol. In the upcoming segments, I'll tell you about what each part does, how it works, and show any repairs or modifications. Before we get to that, though, it'll be helpful if we learn a little about electricity. In the next video, we'll discuss volts, amps, watts, and Ohm's Law. To stay updated, please subscribe and click the bell. I'll see you soon.